I like the horizontal warping mill for a couple of reasons. One is that I can sit down and wind my warp. It makes it a lot easier with the arthritis in my knees if I can be relaxed while I wind my warp. Also, I like the warping mill because it's two yards around and I don't use a guide string. I can move the pegs on the warping mill to fit the length of warp that I want and then just count the revolutions and know how long my warp is. I start on the right because I'm right-handed and holding the yarn in my right hand and I make a simple loop around the right pegs and then go down to the other end and make my cross at the far end. As I talked about in the video on pre-reading, I have an endless warp. And with having the loop, the loop at the starting end and the cross at the other end, then I don't have any loose ends in my cross. And I know that when I go to pre-slay my read, I can start at my cross end. When I start the warp, I make a simple slip knot on the right hand peg, the top right hand peg, and then start winding my warp around my cross and back up. Because this is a tartan that I'm uh, winding, it's going to have an even number. So when I come back up to the top there, I can stop, tuck the yarn underneath the other warp threads and just break it off and get my next color and make a slip knot put it around that peg, and then I'm ready to go off again. Um, and this gives me, um, as you can see, my endless warp down on my cross end. So uh, that's where I'm going to thread my loom on to the back beam and beam it on using the trapeze. When I'm done winding my warp and I've checked to make sure that everything is uh, in the correct count, then I go ahead and tie my cross. I tie it in four places on each side of that loop that loops around the far peg. I take my string, I use postal string that I just get at the hardware store rather than using yarns. I find the postal string is a little stronger. I wrap it around two or three times around my warp chain pull it nice and tight, and then I tie a bow knot. Don't use a hard knot. You don't want anything on your warp chain that you have to use scissors on, or for sure you'll cut your warp. So I've tied both sides around that peg. Now I'm going to take my string and I'm going to tie each side of the other peg. And you can see how I've used my warping mill where there's a piece of wood sticking up there. I use that as a separator for each side of the warp chain that goes onto my cross. And you can see my cross there between those two pegs, the one just uh, above where I'm tying it and the one below. So I'm going to tie both sides on that um, warp chain. And so I bring slip the, the Yarn that my string down alongside and it kind of wants to get stuck there, it's tight, and I can coax it down. Come on, you can do it. There you go. And I'm going to wind it around three times and then I'm going to tie a bow knot in that end. And that gives me four places that I've tied my uh, cross so that it's not going to get away. You can if you want, and I'm going to demonstrate that on this, is tie an extra string through your cross. And a lot of people do this, and it's fine. Um, I, I, I don't think you can be too careful when you're, um, when you're trying to keep your cross, because it's really a pain uh, to lose your cross and have to make another one. So I'm going to just tie a string marking my cross, and tie a bow in it. 
Then I'm going to, to smooth out my warp and at a yard uh, marking, I'm going to wrap it around my warp chain, pull it nice and tight, wrap it around again and make a bow knot. And then I'm going to go up to my loop. And like I said, I don't have a cross at this end. This is just a loop that loops around that furthest peg. And I'm going to go to each side of this loop. And I'm going to wrap my yarn around because I'm going to cut that warp uh, at that loop end after I get it uh, beamed onto the back beam. And so I want to be able to separate this loop so that I know where I need to cut my warp. All right, now I check and make sure that I've got all my ties on. One, two, three, and four. And then I can come up to my far right warping pegs and I can loosen the wing nuts underneath it. And then, as you can see in this warping um, mill, I can then remove those pegs and slide my warp right off of those pegs. Now I'm going to just make a kind of a crocheting uh, chain here by just looping my hand over, bringing the warp chain through and pulling it tight like a slip knot, and then another one, and I'm just going to make my warp chain uh, crocheted together so that it's going to stay all in one piece, and then I'm going to be ready to uh, pre-slay it and beam it on to the back beam. That's it.